guys, um, today I'm going to show you how to use 3D Perl and Noise, or actually how to make your own function very simply. Um, it's very easy, and I'll show you how to make your own function that takes uh, 2D Perl and Noise and makes it 3D. And then I'll show you how, like, I'll show you the concept of how you actually then implement the 3D noise. It's, um, I'm making this tutorial because I haven't really found any tutorials. I kind of had to figure this out on my own. It took me, like, two months, maybe more, um, I'm just estimating, to make something simple like this. And I thought, hey, I'm going to show you how. So, here is my example. And it works pretty well, so like if I hold down X, Y, or Z on my keyboard, then push the plus or minus buttons, I can change the properties. So like this is on the X axis, you can see there was a big old cave there. Um, I can also hold down Z, and now we have this scrolling effect. Also the Y axis works. So we can have them go down like that, or up. So, you get the gist. I can also, um, like, if I get this to a cave, I can also hold down A and plus and minus for amplitude. So this is plus amplitude. Plus amplitude basically makes the caves bigger. Um, minus makes them smaller. And then we also have frequency. Like, how frequent are the caves? So, um, for example, I'll go down here. Frequency, if I plus frequency, um, there's going to be less caves um, next to each other. Although, if I minus frequency, there are more caves next to each other now. There's also octaves, so... Um, if I put the frequency back to something sort of normal, um, now if I hold down O, I can change the number of octaves. And octaves are just like the iterations. So let me put up the frequency so it doesn't look as bad. So yeah, you'd use about eight octaves for randomly looking Perlin noise that isn't all over the place, but still kind of random, like the real world. So, um, there's also, I've, I can, um, press the S button on my keyboard to randomize the seed. And I'll have this project on my Codeberg profile, um, so you can guys play around at it, pr play around in it and look at the code. Because that's another thing, is all the tutorial code was proprietary, <laughs> so you literally could not look at the code. Which, A, proprietary stuff sucks, and B, uh, that is just kind of rude. Well, mean, because it's a tutorial. It's just tutorial code. I mean, what the heck? So, um, alright. I'm going to be using Python with Ursina, just because um, it makes it really simple, so there's no extra nonsense needed, no boilerplate, it's just literally the core ideas. So if I do an uh, if I do an ls, you can see that I've got the dependencies file and main file and Perlin noise 3D file. Now if I hold on. Okay. If I cat the dependencies file You'll see that I have Ursina, Perlin Noise, and NumPy. Um, so what you can do is if you're um, starting the project, so make a directory where you want to make it. So let me just... Um, wait, no, another terminal. Alright, so um, here's my new ter terminal. Um, dang, I'm so itchy. Sorry if I'm doing stuff with my face again. I get itchy. Um, I can open up a new terminal and go to my coding directory. And in here, I'm going to 
make a new directory. And this will be, let's just say, 3D noise tutorial. So I'm going to cd into that directory. And ignore the fact that I called this fake 3D Perlin. I just did that because I don't know if it really counts. But as far as I'm concerned, it works perfectly. So um, then I'm going to make a... Um, I'm going to make a main file with touch. I'm also going to make the Perlin file. So um, let's just say... Let's just call this call this noise 3D.py. Now if I vim main.py, so this is off the beaten path. Um, in Ursina to open up a window, you just do from Ursina import all and you say app equals Ursina app dot run. You can also do some extra stuff like window dot borderless equals false. For some reason that line doesn't work in KDE. So I'll also just do window dot um, full screen, I guess, equals true. I'll also, since the borderless thing doesn't really work in KDE, what I'll do is um, I'll define an input function. This is basically where you can define what happens when a key is pressed. So you can kind of ignore this. This is literally just boilerplate code specific to Ursina. Um, so I'll just say if key equals Q, quit. So let's test this out, just some Ursina boilerplate. Um, and if you don't know Python, uh, it's, you'll, if you don't know Python, you'll be able to follow this tutorial, but I do recommend you know some Python. Just a little, doesn't have to be anything crazy, just like, um, literally just follow the first tutorial in a Python lesson that has code, and you should be fine. Just as long as you know a minimal amount of Python. Um, now, <clears throat> I'll run my main file. Okay, um, okay, it worked. Looks good. Um, now if I press Q, yeah. And will it crash if I press another key? Nope, just Q. So now, let's get to the juicy stuff. I'm going to touch, no, I'm going to vim the, uh, and again, these Ursina and Perlin noise are dependencies that you have to install with pip. Um, I also included numpy in there because some distributions or whatever don't really come with numpy. So um, I'm going to vim noise 3D and then I am going to import, so from Perlin underscore noise import Perlin noise. Now, let me explain this. So, um, I'm going to open up, actually, wait one sec, I need to install it. I'm a little all over the place, I'm sorry about that. But, um, I'm just going to install Blockbench real quickly. It's free and open source under the GPL from what I understand, so I'm going to use it because I don't need anything super complicated like Blender right now. Um, so I'm going to open Blockbench and I'm just going to do this. This is not part of the tutorial. Well, it is. It's just so you can understand a, a concept. So here's a block. Now with two-dimensional two-dimensional Perlin noise, you have a height map. So if I duplicate this block a few times to make a, a plane of blocks. So um, 
just stand by real quick while I duplicate these to make a plane. So, with 2D Perlin Noise, you just create, um, I can show an example, you just create, um, so you, with 2D Perlin Noise, you just create a height map like this, and you can assign um, this height map. You can assign this height map to block values, kind of like this. So, like the higher blocks are where the white is, and the lower blocks are where the black is. So you can do that and make some noise. So um, let's just say this block is where white is. It could be up here and then this would be a, a teeny bit darker. Uh, I think I just hit my mic, sorry about that. Um, so you get the, the idea. So what a lot of people do is they'll just spawn in a platform of blocks and assign a new Y value with um, Perlin noise by passing in the X and Z. And here is what I didn't understand, is if you are um, assigning a platform of blocks, so let me put this back real quick. If you are, is, if you are assigning a platform of blocks, so a set number, just a platform of blocks, um, with new Y's from Perlin. Um, what I didn't understand is when you have overhangs in your game and stuff, how, like, you might have this block all the way up here and it's part of the overhang, but then you have this hole in the ground. So, I was wondering, how, how on earth do you tell the platform to spawn another block under that block? Now, you don't, because you don't even use the platform method in the first place. It's a little slow, this is why you should never use Python for big game development like this, but um, essentially what you do is instead of looping to create a platform and then assigning a new height to all those blocks, what you do is instead loop, and every time you iterate, make a Perlin function with the x, y, and z, so x, y, and z passed in. I can show you an example. Oh wait, oops. Okay, new file. So, um, let's say, so let me, can I make this bigger? Yeah, okay. So, for x in, for x in range 10. Um, for y in, so usually what you would, so, okay, one sec. For for a platform, you know, what you would do is um, something like this. Um, and then you would say uh, block, this is some pseudo Python code. So block, and you would say something like x perlin xz. X. So what is happening here is um, you iter so to create the platform you just make a block at the X and Z and then for the Y you just pass X and Z into a Perlin 2D function so a two-dimensional Perlin function so let's just specify 2D now for a 3D you could do this with 2D too but instead what you would do is something like 4x in range um, 10 for y in range 10 for z in range 10 you would say p equals perlin Let's use 2D again, just for an um, easy understanding. And you'd pass in X and Z. Now, 
what you would do now is say if block so like you you would do something like if y is less than is um less than um p you could say then um uh block id equals let's say dirt and we'll just say this equals um air let's just say that so that this would stay air unless y is a is below the perlin value uh, this also has the added benefit of filling in terrain under the little shell, but then you would say just standard x, y, z um, block id, you know, something like that. And um, let me make this bigger. So this works. But it also is actually very straight. So if you use this method, it's actually very straightforward with 3D Perlin noise too. Um, so if I pass in Perlin 3D and I say Y, then what would happen is it would say, it, it would return a value just like 2D Perlin noise. But instead what is happening is um, the lighter the value, the higher the number, the lower, you, you know, it's the same. But what else, what you can say now is if, is if, um, if P is under, let's say, a certain threshold like 12, this means that the darker spots will, so, the, um, the darker spots are zero and whatnot. So the black is zero. If P is under 12, then um, put dirt. So this actually makes the lighter spots air because the darker spots are being turned to dirt. Um, and bam. Now let's look at actually how you write this function. The way you write it is, okay, back to pseudocode. Um, well, actually, this is the real code, so let's just go ahead and write it. Um, so, yeah, we can, I think, you know, just for good measure, let me specify what we just did again, because some people are probably not going to understand this. This is like the only, and this is probably going to be the only comprehensible tutorial you'll be able to find, because I actually know what you're going through if you find this tutorial. So, um, if you have a platform, remember our analogy of you assign a new value, like that. Um, now what I'm saying is you loop through, so you go like, you, you loop through, um, until you have a cube. Now what this th is saying is like, okay, say the Perlin noise is somewhere around here. Um, if it's under the Perlin noise, make a cube. So we'll duplicate this um, until we get to that Perlin noise value. So actually, let's just duplicate this. Sorry this is taking so long. I just really want to make sure you guys understand this because I know how frustrating this can be. Um, so let's say the Perlin noise starts, like, it waves here. So Let's say some of these are in that range, so we'll duplicate those. And we're not moving them, we're duplicating. That's the difference, is we're creating the block as long as it's under the Perlin noise. We're not using the Perlin noise to move that block. So it's, a, it's different. So you get something like that. Um, so to writing this actual function. So here we are. Um, in the noise 3D py file. So we're going to define um, noise 3D, I guess. And I call
called these something different in my prepared code. But yeah. Um, now we're going to have the user pass in an x, y, and z. And we could also have them pass in like an octave, seed, amplitude, frequency, stuff like that. Just standard two-dimensional Perlin noise stuff. It also works for three-dimensional because essentially we're turning two-dimensional Perlin noise into three-dimensional Perlin noise um, with multiplication. So we could have that, but let's just hard code the values because this is just tutorial code. Um, so let's say noise equals and this is for so standard Perlin noise so far so 2D Perlin noise you would do this as well so far and you know what we could also um, write a 2D Perlin noise while we're at it function so um, I'm gonna save that for later because first I want to show you how the syntax, just the syntax so you understand for 2D Perlin noise would work. So you would pass in an X and a Z, and then we would say noise equals Perlin noise. And this stuff is just um, specific to Ursina. That is why I'm showing you this right now so you can get sort of familiar with how the syntax works. So you can see the differences in idle and, um, and pinpoint the differences to use it in a different language like C, C++, C, C Sharp, um, Java, it, you know, just some other language. Um, so we're going to pass in, let's say, seed is 10. And I found this is actually kind of glitchy with the seed 0. I don't know why. It, it might just happened on my testing. I don't know. But um, I'm going to set octaves to 1 so far. Um, and that's it for that. Now let's um, say return so actually y actually so y equals noise and we're going to say x <clears throat> divided by, and this is your frequency, so um, you would have like a variable here, frec, um, so actually let's do that, so um, frequency equals 14, and you, and you want your frequency to, buy, to be higher than your out amplitude for smooth terrain, this is just general Perlin knowledge, um, so let's set our amplitude to 10, for example. Um, now let's say x divided by frec and z divided divided by frec. And what this will do is do some Perlin magic to smoothly interpolate the values. And so now, and like if you need help understanding um, Perlin noise, some more. There are plenty of tutorials out there. A lot of them actually do use Ursina, so you'll be happy figuring that out. 2D Perlin noise is covered very well. 3D Perlin noise is where it gets hard. So, um, noise. And then what you'll do is after this, you'll amp you'll amplify that whole thing by the amplitude. So times it by amplitude. And what you would do now is return y. Now, um, for noise 3D, we can actually use this noise 2D function we just made. Um, and what we can do is actually, um, we'll say p equals noise uh, 2D noise 2D so then um, what we'll do is pass in X and Y then we'll times this by noise 2D again and we'll say Y and Z now 
I don't think it has to be specifically like this, but I've had the most success like this. So um, you want to have x and y, y then z, z then x. Um, so it chains together, kind of, if you see what I mean. Um, so like, I if I um, I could say x so x y y z z x x y y z z x x you get it I think um, you get it I hope you get it so then you would just return p it's uh, really as simple as that um, <laughs> but uh, it took me an embarrassingly long time to figure this out so. And honestly, I could have figured this out fairly easily, I feel like. I just couldn't understand how to implement it. So I'm also kind of showing, showing you that. So now let's go into the main function. And let's start with noise 2D. So I'm actually going to make this slightly faster by, instead of doing 4x and z, I'm just going to do for i in range, I'm going to say, let's just say um, size equals 10. So I'm going to do for i in range size times size. Now something interesting is with this method you actually need to floor the value, otherwise it will be odd. Um, so. And I'm gonna. I'm also going to leave some. I'm also going to leave a couple of tutorials um, down in the description. Some for Perla Noise, some for Ursina. Um, there's this guy called Red Hen Dev on YouTube who is trying to make, um, trying to play around with mesh terrain by making a Minecraft clone. I highly recommend that tutorial. It's very good. Um, I actually interacted with him a few times, and I I made some tree code before he did. It, it was fun. Very fun. Um, so, and I also am happy to answer some questions. I'll link my Discord server down in the description, and I'll also link uh, a video game I'm making with Perlin Noise. Um, down in the description, it's Discord server. Again, I use Discord because it's a great place to grow communities and I have to use it anyways, so I'll take advantage of it. So, we don't have a block function. So what I'm instead going to do is summon... Um, actually, I'll just create a block, block function to make this simpler. So, um, we really only need floor. From numpy. So numpy is basically just um, another module that adds math functions, numpy. So um, I'm just going to pass in x, y, and z. These don't exist yet because I'm going to turn this confusing mess of a loop and standardize it for you guys. So floor i divided by size z equals floor i um, modulus size. Um, so, yeah. Uh, just pretend I have a 4x, 4z loop and that these are the loop values. You don't need to pay attention to this. I just did it so load times are faster. But um, I'm also going to create a 4 i in range, uh, a for y in range, um, for i in range size. Um, now what, what I'm going to do is take this block and um, I'm going to write the block function now. <laughs> um, so define block. So you can ignore the code I'm going to put in here because it's Ursina specific code. But I basically just made this block function so it's easier for, for you guys to syntactically understand this code. So pretend this block function is whatever block function you have in your code. That takes an XYZ, maybe a block type, 
Who knows? Um, so, you can ignore what I'm going to put in here. But I'll explain it if you want. So, Ursina has a model class. Uh, no, an entity class. Where you can assign a model, um, a texture, <clears throat> and let's say also a color. There is way more in Ursina, but... Uh, again, tutorials in the description. But, uh, yeah, so... Um, so, this is going to be like a just a teal cube that spawns in. And what I'm going to say is... Um, P equals noise 2D, let's say. Um, and we'll pass in X, Y, no, X and Z. So, then we'll say, if, um, if P is less than 12, I should also put if. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to make this more similar to the 3D so we can only change one function to change the whole thing. But let's see what this does. I'm probably going to get an error, but I don't know. So let's py main.py. Yeah. Alright, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Oh, d does it need a position? Hold on. Let's try this. No, it's, um, oh my gosh. I barely understand Python errors. Will this work? Please work. I'm losing my patience here. Right. Um, so first of all, <clears throat> I think I called this function wrong. And second of all, um, uh, <clears throat> second of all, from noise import all, I'm going to rename that noise 3D function to noise, just because we also have noise 2D in there, so mv noise, this is just a quick way to rename files in Linux at least. So now, please work. Right, okay, there's a thing in Ursina, so Ursina specific, um, called the editor camera, which allows me to move around, so let's add that here. All right, so, Ah, oh, jeez. Okay, let me also <laughs> um, make this easier for you to see the different blocks. Um, from So this is also Ursina-specific stuff, just for shading, kind of. From Ursina.shade, shaders, import basic lighting shader. And I'll just say, in here, shader equals basic lighting shader. So, now if I run this, the cube's got definite sides. Oh, and you know what we didn't do? Because I, I think I see the block fa faces, face edges are just very hard to see. 
is we actually have to floor this. Oh my gosh, I am so itchy. I'm always so itchy. Um, I do not know why. But, um, okay, so we floored those values, and we're still not seeing anything. Do we have to... Oh, you know what I did? I set the amplitude to 10, so it's always going to be under 12. So let's say 8, just because that's under the amplitude. Um, I'm still not really seeing anything. Hold on. Could be the seed. Um, four. <clears throat> four. Four? No? No? Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, let's vim into the noise again. Um, uh, I'm just going to set this frequency to 20 and amplitude to 15. I think that's what I had in my other code. And <clears throat> this seed can also be 15. Yeah, I'm still not really seeing anything. That's odd. Give me one sec. Um, I'm actually kind of glad we're having an error so then I can figure it out on camera so then you guys can not make the same error. Um, adds more to the juicy content. add um, a thing that randomizes the um, seed if key equals s um, seed equals rand and um, eight hundred I guess so I'll also import um, from random import rand int. So some Python stuff. Python specific stuff. And Arsena specific stuff. Just to randomize the uh, Perlin seed. So now I'll define seed up here. Seed will be 1 so far, I think. Um, and let's say you need to pass in a seed. Um, so now I'm going to edit the noise function just to accommodate for seeds. Um, so you need a seed. I'll change this here. Alright, let's try this. So here's my lovely cube. And I'm pressing this, and nothing's really happening. This is a really dragged on tutorial. I can see that. Alright, let's just see what happens when I do noise 3D. Because it's the basic, basically the same. Right. Okay, let me add seed to noise 3D as well. And you guys need seed as well. And I should also add the Y coordinate um, to this. So, yeah, we are getting something. That's very odd. 
So, I did show you how to do this in the, in the tutorial. Um, but, yeah, I, I think... So, let me recap. Um, basically, what we did is... Let me open up GIMP. So, quick recap. What we essentially did is we understood a new concept. So instead of drawing a platform, so, <coughs> excuse my terrible uh, pencil drawing skills with GIMP. So we had, we moved from using a platform of blocks, so basically air under the blocks, just one layer of blocks, to using um, to using, um, a, a, a pattern of blocks again, but instead it's filled in all the way. So there's no empty gap. And the way we did this is basically said, hey, instead of the Perlin noise, um, moving, uh, the Y up or down, um, instead of the Perlin noise doing that, what we're instead doing is, um, we're saying, if, if, um, the value being checked is under the, under the height given by Perlin noise, then spawn a block anyways. And so essentially what we're doing with 3D noise is we're saying, um, What we're doing with 3D noise is saying basically the same thing. So let me just draw in values. So like here is 0, um, 1. So these are just Perl and height values. Um, so this would be 0, um, negative 1. No, wait. 0, 0, 0, and this would be 1. And so here the empty space is Perlin is saying, hey, your new height is 1. And so we're saying, oh wait, but we're only making a block if the, if the block's height is under the Perlin height. So this Perlin height will always be um, air. So like, this is where the Perlin says, hey, I'm 1. This is where it says, hey, I'm two. This is where it says, hey, I'm one. I hope that makes sense. So 3D Perlin noise is basically the same thing, except um, you are saying, you're saying the same thing. So um, this Perlin value, let's say, okay, we only want to make a block as long as the value is under 14. So let's just say, this is 14. This is um, a bunch of other 14s. This is 15, you know, so on and so forth. Um, yada, 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 yada. These are all 14s and 15s where there's air. Now, these blocks are where there's like 13, um, 13, 13, 12, you know, just like these other values under 14. So I, I hope this helped you guys. I, I hope this makes some sense. I had to figure this out on my own. So, um, <laughs> I, I brought it upon myself to make the best tutorial I could. I don't know how well I did. Um, I'm sort of new to the YouTube thing. I'm only like 70 subscribers or something like that. So, um, I, I hope you guys had, um, I, I hope you guys understood my tutorial. And, um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Um, please like, subscribe, ring that, uh, tick that bell. Um, subscribe because I really need the subs. 
Um, uh, I don't want to sound like a beggar here now. Uh, only subscribe if you think I made good content. Um, subscribe, like, dislike if you um, really thought this video was terrible. Um, leave a comment ha to leave a comment. Tell me what you thought. Tell me how I can improve. Join my Discord server down below. Follow me on Odyssey. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Wow, 3D Perlin noise is actually very simple.